a KQED television production. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna. Great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Available at nearby stores. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers available at walmartlabs.com. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has over 250 types of natural stone choices in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, retired professor and fiction writer Elaine Klassen grew up in a restaurant. Having seen the good, the bad, and the ugly behind the scenes, she opted for another path and now creates her own culinary stories. And clinical research scientist Philippe Fogg conducts research to determine accurate results. He contrasts his measured life in the lab with the poetry he craves with each dining experience. But first, entrepreneur and Bay Area native Ryan Poirier has created a unique business, Satisfaction Guaranteed. He's all about service. That's why he appreciates the no-nonsense, no-frills efficiency at his iconic San Francisco landmark. In North Beach, it's called Tosca Cafe. As a young cook, when I thought far into my future, I thought I want the speakeasy vibe and I want wood dining room and I want the feel of history. You know, and then Tosca was presented as a real speakeasy that was really open during Prohibition and really serving alcohol and it was the real deal. My name is Joshua Even, and I am the chef at Tosca Cafe. The first thing we did was we came in and we cleaned up. We replaced the cracked vinyl with nice new red leather, pulled down all the murals and we cleaned them all up. Gave it a good old spit shine, but in the style that it always was in. The cocktail program was really important to us, and we started off with a really wonderful cocktail menu of really spectacular drinks with great flavor profile. And then the next big project for us was the kitchen. We built a brand new shiny kitchen, beautiful heat tile, blue enamel stoves. As soon as April and I walked in, the concept was obvious, and it was going to be Italian food. Food that was satiating, rustic, and familiar to the people who live in North Beach. Coming from New York, I think that cooking in San Francisco and in the Bay Area, and Northern California specifically, is a privilege, and I feel blessed. When people leave here, I want them to want to come back. I want everybody to want to be a regular. All right, Ryan, Tosca Cafe, this really is an institution in San Francisco, almost 100 years old. Absolutely, 94 years old. Yeah. It was a speakeasy during Prohibition, a refuge for the beats and artists of the mid 20th century. And after former owner Janet Etheridge bought it, a total madhouse. <laughs> and she's the, still on the menu. <laughs> the Queen of North Beach. And so now, it's a bar and a restaurant. In the past, I think it was definitely bar first, mm -hmm. but now with April Bloomfield at the helm, it is definitely restaurant first. Absolutely, and she's a, a well-known New York restaurateur as well. So for me, it is their chicken marsala. It is in incredible to die for. I've gone, parked in front illegally, ran in, <laughs> had it, ran back out. It is that good. It's juicy, it's roasted, 
It's salty with the Marsala sauce. It comes on a bed of bread cubes that are bathed in the chicken juice. It is an absolutely spectacular take on chicken. And I think You're one making of the best. me hungry over here, I know. I'm I think you. it's I think it's one of the best in San Francisco. Right. And Philippe, what was your experience at Tosca? My experience was very good. So I think that they make the pasta dishes very well. Mm -hmm. We had one dish that had uh, chicken livers in the pasta mm -hmm. and the flavors from the meat mixed very well with the cream. And the other pasta dish was with cheese sauce and it was just sublime. The creaminess, I, I just wanted to have another bowl. And just bathe in the creaminess. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was delicious. Elaine, where did you start? Well, we started with the kind of outrageous starters they have of the mm -hmm. pig's ears, mm -hmm. pressed pig's ears, mm -hmm. and the fried pig's tails. And the women in our group said to the men, okay, one or the other, right. ears or tails, not both, <laughs> too much, too many pig parts there. So we, <laughs> we, we did opt for the pig's tails, and we expected them to be long and curly, <laughs> but I must say they were better than expected. It was very interesting. I love the meatiness of the pigtails. They fry them, but they're lightly fried. There's a Frito Misto, yeah. it's lightly fried. When you take a bite, it doesn't feel heavy. Mm -hmm. And I think what they fried in, it just kind of crackles in your mouth. Mm -hmm. We also had the chicken for two, mm -hmm. and we were really happy that the waitress told us it would be an hour, because that's nice to know that's gonna happen. I think that's a signature dish, though. That yeah. It is, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we were glad to know that so we could pace ourselves and, mm -hmm. and get ready for that. But I have had better chicken, and we found that that bread that was there, which I suspect is there to soak up the nice juices Absolutely. and the fat, it just tasted fat. I did not get a lot of flavor with that bread. I didn't hmm. think it added to it. Did either of you have or we, try the bucatini? Yeah, it was wonderful. I love the spice, the oil, and you know what I think is great is the texture that they add with the breadcrumbs. Yes. And it, it's just one of these things that elevates that pasta dish because it's so simple. What did you have to drink? We opted for cocktails at the mm -hmm. beginning. I had a very, very good Negroni. One of the world's perfect cocktails, a Negroni. <laughs> yes. I had a martini because I have never in my life had a martini, and I thought, it's never time, in your it's life. time to grow up and be a grown up, <laughs> right? My goodness. I had my first martini. It yeah. was delicious, and I would definitely, I'm gonna order martinis again in my life. So thank you for introducing me to martinis. Absolutely, <laughs> my, my pleasure. Um, when we go, we always start with cocktails. You have to. Right. The bar invites you in and they have a cappuccino <laughs> on the menu, <laughs> which is basically, it's like adult chocolate milk. <laughs> it is uh, bourbon with a chocolate ganache and a little cream and it's just to die for, it's great. Did you save any room for dessert? We had the cannoli, which mm -hmm. is an old favorite of mine. And I'm sorry, I, I was a little disappointed in that one too. I, I loved the crispy shell. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel like it was homemade, definitely, mm -hmm. the crispy shell. But the inside, to me, should be a little lighter and fluffier. Mm -hmm. And it was a little heavy. I, I disagree. I think their cannoli was just fantastic. The, huh. the hazelnuts that they served with it, it was just the perfect complement. The density of the cream or the filling inside was what I was looking for. Huh? Well, yeah. you know, there we can have the big cannoli debate yeah. here. <laughs> That's right. I love their no frills approach to service. I think April Bloomfield, I know when they opened, brought some of her staff from New York, and to me, they bring that attitude with them, which I think for some people may be a little bit off putting, but for me, I want to stick to the people that I'm with. I don't necessarily want the whole song and dance of service, so yeah. I really appreciate right. that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It was it I, was that. Yeah, it's very, they're pros. They're absolute pros. Yeah. All right, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. Tosca is, for me, a new classic, uh, born again on Columbus Avenue, and it's a great place to start or finish a night in San Francisco. Philippe. Bring friends, order a bowl of pasta, get the best Negroni in North Beach, and have a good time. And Elaine a fun place and I will always remember it as my first martini. <laughs> if you would like to try Tosca Cafe, it's located on Columbus between Broadway and Pacific in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-986-9651. It's open every evening for dinner. Reservations are recommended and the average tab per person without drinks is around $60. Comfort food is served at Elaine's Pick, although at this place it's elaborate, so we call it American Bistro Fair. 
The big, bold flavors are served up in an elegant setting full of neighborly charm. In Los Gatos at Nick's Next Door. This restaurant used to be a home and then the old owner transferred it into a restaurant. The tree is about, I want to say, 180 years old. We produce good California bistro style food that is made with love. Hi, I'm Nick DeFew and I own Nick's Next Door in Los Gatos. I went to Culinary Academy in San Francisco. The teachers there were old school French teachers and they basically said, you have to work 15, 16 hours a day minimum to get ahead in this business. And I said, okay. I said goodbye to my friends and family pretty much for a good four or five years and I dived into it. One of the reasons why I got into this business is because I wanted to make people happy. My grandmother was the one who inspired me to, to, to become a chef because she cooked for us and it was, it was made with love. I just wanted to provide that same happiness that I felt every day when I was there. Everybody works five days a week here. We are closed uh, Sundays and Mondays because Sundays and Mondays are family days. It's very important for us to be able to spend time with our, our families. Cheers. I would have never wanted to do anything else. It's been a pleasure to provide those smiles, to be able to provide food and make people happy with it. It was the best decision I ever made. Now, I just have to say, you know, when you say check, please, at this place, how do you get the check? Oh, it's in a wonderful book. They do st stick the check in a book. And people do write comments all over the book. Right. It's very charming. So a new way of saying check, please. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how did you discover Nix? Well, I'm in the neighborhood. I live very close by, and it was a tiny little hole in the wall on Main Street. We suggested, you know, since it was so hard to get into, that he needed to expand. And he said, no, I'd rather be full than have a bigger restaurant and be empty. But eventually he had to, and he moved around the corner. It's not Nick's next door. It's Nick's around the corner. Mm -hmm. We followed him, and uh, I think half the town has followed him. What is your dish that you grab every time? Well, there's a lot, but I think my favorite is the steak. I think it's one of the best steaks around. And my snobby food daughter uh, from L.A. says that she thinks it was the best steak she's ever <laughs> had, too. It's, it's just wonderfully flavorful. It's very juicy. It's always done precisely as we ask. Mm -hmm. It comes with uh, frites, and it, it feels like a French bistro. But I have a hard time not just sticking to appetizers, because I love his starters. And I have definitely had two or three starters for a meal instead of ordering a main dish. And what's your favorite? I think I like the chicken mm -hmm. liver pate, which is served with sherry and red cherries, and has that wonderful sweet that goes so well with, with liver. I definitely love the chicken liver the pate. Starters. Ryan, where did you um, go first? Absolutely. I took my mom to lunch. Aww. Um, Aww. Nice I thought guy. that was really nice that was, that was nice. And I know um, everyone went to dinner, but our lunch experience was great. Mm -hmm. We arrived, it was very, very busy. Mm -hmm. So they said, please take a seat on the patio. And we actually started with a hibiscus lemonade in the sun of Los Gatos. Wow. We're nice. both San Franciscans, mm -hmm. so the sun is like, <laughs> we sit and we just basked in it for about 20 minutes before we got a table. And then we went right to the uh, crab toast. We would have liked to have a little more of that very clean Dungeness crab flavor. It was a little muddled with avocado and a farmer's cheese, but when I got that really great big bite of lumpy crab meat, that was excellent. And there was enough where if we had finished it, we wouldn't have been able to finish much else. It was it was entree portion size. I love how large the, the starter portions are. They are. Did you agree with that, Philippe? I did. I had the chicken liver pate and it was infused with cognac, and I loved it because my mom used to make that. Uh. It was served with croutons, it was delicious, it was creamy, just perfect. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to have comfort food that night, probably because it looks like a house to me, it looks like someone's inviting me to their home. <laughs> so I had the meatloaf, and it was served with a wonderful, creamy mushroom uh, coulis or a sauce, and underneath there were <laughs> this these most wonderful mashed potatoes. It was like eating clouds. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that I ate that whole dish in maybe five minutes, and it was delicious. It was you came perfect. out with, with mashed potatoes all over, <laughs> your, <laughs> all over your mustache and your beard, didn't you? He's really famous for that meatloaf. His, it's his grandmother's recipe, he says. It is very flavorful. Uh -huh. It is a, an American bistro, right? And so for me, I hear that, and I automatically gravitate toward the burger. This one, I think, was 
elevated, it was delicious. They called it a Kobe burger, and the meat was rich, velvety. There's a bit of pork belly that really sets it off, and it had really nice tomatoes. That's not heavy at all, is it? A little, a little pork belly on your burger? <laughs> no, <laughs> you know what? And they, were, and they were nice enough because, again, I was with my mom, I said, you know, can we split these mains? Yeah. And they actually brought it out to us, burger, even in half with nice. her scallops on the other half of one plate for each of us. Wow. And I thought that was so considerate. Really, that made the experience really special. Right. And, and you um, had scallops as well? And we had the scallops, mm -hmm. which were perfect. Right. With the crispy kale, which that um, bitterness mm -hmm. in the scallops that they serve with the polenta in a kind of a really light Italian sausage sauce. And I think, to me, that was the star dish at lunch. Mm -hmm. He's doing things that a lot of people in the Bay Area are doing, but I think he just does them so well. Uh, for example, roasted Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. That's very popular now, but his are just cooked so perfectly, charred on the outside and really soft and mushy on the inside, mm -hmm. with some, of course, pork belly in there, too. <laughs> but we also had wine, and I love that Nick's feature is Santa Cruz. And people don't know what a historic region that is, the Santa Cruz Mountains for wine. There's some beautiful wineries yeah. there. It is. It was yeah. really good. Service was impeccable. Um, oh, yeah, the service was service terrific. Was. Don't they make you feel like you're just part of the family? Oh, well, you are. Mm -hmm. and, and they're very intuitive, too. When I arrived there after driving from San Francisco, the wait staff, the, the hostess, um, you know, when I arrived, she looked at me and she said, you need a cocktail. And I said, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were sat down on the veranda in the front mm -hmm. and we just had a wonderful evening. It was warm and so anti-San Francisco <laughs> for weather. <laughs> it's, uh, it was great. It's nice what to about get desserts? Warm. Any desserts for the group here? Oh, we had the banana bread pudding, which came with a huge dollop of rich, airy whipped cream on top. And it came with a little uh, cognac in the base, and it was excellent. All right, Elaine, your restaurant, give us a quick summary. A true neighborhood gem. Uh, everybody has a good time at Nick's, and we always go back. All right, and Philippe? Go there for a slow evening with friends. And Ryan? I wish Nick's was next door <laughs> to my home in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Nick's Next Door, it's located on College Avenue at Maine in Los Gatos. The telephone number is 408-402-5053. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. Looking for a creative gift idea for the drinks lover in your life? Think a good read and a full glass. A bottle and a companion book makes an ideal package. Do you know a wine aficionado that has everything? Try pairing one of Napa's world-class Cabernets and a wine-driven recipe book that's a feast for the eyes. Spirits lover on your list? This ode to San Francisco's famous cocktails and a homegrown gin make a perfect pairing. And for those who seek adventure in a glass, try trendy honey wine like this local version while reading about its ancient origins. Just a note, my birthday is in November and I'll take them all. From the moment you enter Philippe's restaurant, the poetry begins on the menu, in the glass, and on the plate. Each orchestrated experience fills the senses. In San Francisco at Atelier Crenne. I always believe that food is art, our expression of the way that we feel about food, about the world, about moments. It's a dialogue between us and the customer. My name is Dominique Crenne. The name of the restaurant is Atelier Crenne. It's the name after my dad. My father was a politician and he was a painter too. So you can see painting through the restaurant. It's a place where I want people to emerge in a space that is much more than just coming and eat here. I think I want people to walk into this place without expectation. I want to pamper them, but they have to trust me. They have to trust my team, and they have to let go of whatever happened during the day before, just let go and just come and enjoy. I would say the last course, you get a beautiful wooden box that we make here, filled with chocolate, and then on the box it's the poem that I wrote to my father when he passed away. I think it's very powerful. I'm not just serving food, I'm also sharing a part of me. 
and it's, I think it's very important. I love the box and the poetry, and it's, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. I'm, I'm like crying right now. <laughs> All right, Philippe, this restaurant has gotten so many accolades. When did you discover it? You know, I discovered it on my 45th birthday. We were 12 and we were in the back room and I did not know what to expect. Uh, I discovered an experience that I haven't had in dining uh, ever. Mm -hmm. From the time that you read the poetry on the menu, uh, which sets the theme for the whole evening, the utensils and the room, and especially the wines and the food that she prepares is unique. And I don't think that you can say that there's another restaurant in the city that is like that. It was a wonderful adventure. It uh, was a four hour dinner and I enjoyed every minute of it. Elaine, what was your experience? And I, experience, of course, is the word. It is an experience. It was just stupendous. I've never had a meal like it. And I really do think it's the best meal I've ever had in my life. Wow, wow. It was amazing and beautiful. And yet, with all that, not pretentious. Uh, which I have experienced in other Michelin star restaurants. Right. And this is two Michelin star. Did you get a sense that you could ask any question and they would answer with a smile and everything? So lovely. There was no stiffness. Mm -hmm. It was normal people who love food. Right. Brian, start off with what you had. We started the meal with a palate cleanser and it was a white chocolate with a gelée on top that had like a, a liquid inside that when you put it in your mouth, for me, I put it in my mouth and I went, what's going on? I bite into it, it all over my shirt. Like a um, <laughs> All over my shirt. <laughs> like a one bite. It, it, well, I went, oh, everywhere. So, What part of the poem was that? <laughs> that was the first line. That was the first, that was the absolute first thing that we ate. And thus his cure. Yeah. <laughs> that in the glass of Dom Perignon, right at the beginning of the meal, you already know. That set it off. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Chef Kren came out, greeted us, mm -hmm. was really friendly and just said, you know, welcome, it's your first time, you live in the neighborhood, that's great. Pretty much buckled your seatbelts, because this is a ride. Mm -hmm. There were oysters, there yes. was fish, yes. there was a smoked trout. trout. Yes. Oh, and then a row. And the row. Yes. Oh. It was amazing. It was amazing. I love smoked trout, and that's the best smoked trout I've ever had, well, ever in my life. I had another early favorite. It was an oyster roasted, sitting on top of some creme fraiche, sitting on top of some fermented pineapple. Yeah. Oh, now, why would yes. an oyster and a delay. creme fraiche and pineapple work? It's the most fabulous taste. So that's what I like about this place, is that you would never think of putting those ingredients together. She does, you eat it, and you're just wowed every time. Mm -hmm. There was a wonderful tartlet that uh, was a savory raw cow's milk. Yeah, yeah and they, they called it a cheese course, and it was astounding. And and I, I think with the, the mustard seed coulis that they had, it was just sublime. It was really good. It was very good. It was really, a really nice cheese course. Mm -hmm. There was a lobster, not a bisque per se, but a couple of really nice pieces of lobster with yeah. this broth over it that we were, I mean, we were holding the bowl. Yeah. Right? yeah. And to speak to the bowl, to the utensils, to again, to how thoughtful the meal was. I'm looking at my spoon and I'm going, oh, it's wood and it looks like it's hand carved. Right. And sure enough, I asked, and they go, oh yeah, the pastry chef actually sits there and whittles our spoons <laughs> and they get that patina of wood. It was right. that kind of care into the full meal is why. Because you're paying money. I mean, this is a very expensive restaurant well, for the experience. I, yeah. For what you get, I think it's... Mm -hmm. Any restaurant, right. you get what you pay for. Right. Yeah. Not all the time, but with this, I think you get even more more, more than, than what you pay for, for because Dominique it's Crenn. It's art. It's art. It's absolutely. Food. Absolutely. You know, I was going to be indignant about the price because I was going to get kind of moralistic, like, well, you could feed an African village for three months. But then after the second course, I said, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it. I am going to enjoy this. Right. And it was, it was such a memorable experience that you have to stop thinking about what it's costing. And talk about, um, because they do beautiful wine pairings, oh, you have choices, wow. you can either get the reserve tasting or the by the glass or the grand tasting mm -hmm. and any time you Red. start with Dom Perignon it's nothing's and wrong with you that. already know right. <laughs> and what about desserts and sort of those the rest of those courses oh my gosh they started with this uh, forest theme and there were yes. um, egg white kind of mm -hmm. uh, candy and then there were mignardis on the side uh, edible butterflies and leaves and it, you just didn't want to eat it it was so beautiful it came in a thing that almost looked like like a tree right the dish alone was beautiful yeah and the dessert inside there was it looked like berries right. that were actually ice cream right mm -hmm. 
get out of here. It was great. Yes. And then you won't leave hungry. Mm -hmm. As much you as are. you're eating these very small, a lot of them single bites, we were very satiated. All right, Philippe, your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you want to treat yourself to a wonderful, holistic experience, go to Atelier Crenne. All right. I find myself reading the poem that was the menu and trying to tie words to the food, for which I only have one. Incredible. All right, and Elaine? And it was a night of poetry, so I wrote a haiku to express my sentiments. A night of surprises, flavors bold but ephemeral, taste earth, woods, sea. If you would like to try Atelier Crenn, it's located on Fillmore Street at Filbert in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-440-0460. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are required, and the dinner tab per person without drinks is $300, service included. I have to thank my amazing guests on this week's show, Ryan Poirier, who satisfies his late night cravings with a nightcap at Tosca Cafe in San Francisco, and Elaine Klassen, who sits down to flavorful American Bistro Fair in Los Gatos at Nick's Next Door, and Philippe Borg, who reaches the ultimate in dining experiences at Hotelier Crenne in San Francisco. Now, we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about, so find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, and don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the delicious wines we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone, and cheers, cheers. to you guys. Cheers. 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 Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has over 250 natural stone choices and over 10,000 stone slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Natural mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, open source engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers at walmartlabs.com. Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna, great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Online at safecatch.com.